This is what happens when you escape the run. You get put into chicken jail. Dun dun! walk number three I'm gonna start you over here on this side and show you uh, the wind damage we had a, a bad storm the other day and some heavy winds I wasn't expecting it to be even that close to heavy but you see how thick these vines are on these tomatoes and that one I come out here and it was snapped completely in half so I just dug a hole stuck it down in a hole covered it up I don't know if it's gonna reroot I've never done that before, so I'm hoping it will, but if not, I'll plant some another tomato there because I got plenty uh, to move around. And then this guy was standing up nice and tall, and then all of a sudden I come out, same thing, it was laying all the way on the ground. I thought it had broken too, but it just got pulled out of the ground a little bit, so I pulled it over there to the trellis, tied it up a little bit to kind of give it some support, and we're going to let it run. These are a cosmic eclipse. So I had four of those guys in here, and then I have this San Marzano right here. You know, he's doing good too. And then we've got some volunteers along this line here. You know, as a whole, looks like they're marching from the, the, from the lattice <laughs> out to the front. And then we got some clover coming back up in here. I got to get this out. We had planted clover as a cover crop this past uh, fall and winter, trying to add some nitrogen back into the soil. And it did really good. I mean, the tomatoes look awesome in this bed. And this will be the third year we've grown tomatoes in this bed. So, but next year I think we're going to let it uh, we're going to let it run fallow, um, and give it a rest. Plus, I've been de debating on mating, maybe putting into a putting a patio out here. So, thoughts for next year. All right, let me walk you over here and show you the lettuce. Let me peel this thing back here, get it out of the way, because. It's just really in the way right now. All right. So let me show you what I got going on here. I got lettuce bed here. This is our iceberg lettuce. And we've got some onions coming back in the back there. There's a tomato back here. This is going to be a volunteer tomato. In fact, all of these tomatoes here are all volunteers. So this one in the front and then all these along the front here, all volunteers. And then you see the big blob of tomatoes right here. Where we probably threw a tomato off the deck uh, last year, and now every one of those seeds that was in that tomato is going up. So it's uh, it's just a, a mess right there. I'm probably going to end up pulling all those out because obviously we can't grow that many tomatoes in one spot, and we really have plenty of tomatoes. So I may pull some up and repot them and see if my neighbors want some. But other than that, they're probably just going to get tossed to the chickens. All right here's our rose bush. This is this was given to us by the uh, by uh, Vita Ham, uh, Caleb's mom, and they had cut it. They pulled it up and brought it over here, bare root and everything. And I am so pleased to see it actually growing. I've had horrible, horrible time growing roses on my homestead. Seems like every time somebody bring me a live one over here, I end up killing it somehow. So. I'm so glad to see this thing actually producing. It had two beautiful pink blooms on here that Beth cut off yesterday to make some uh, to make some candles with. So, but that thing's going to keep on growing and looking great. Here's my blackberry patch. And the sun's now beaming on my face. It was raining just a few minutes ago, so now you can, see, you can probably see the little raindrops on the leaves. So this is the blackberry patch, and it's a hot mess. I can t I know. Some of y'all probably can see that I have no control over this thing whatsoever, but that's my plan this year. It's on my list of things to do is to get in here and, add, and do some trimming 
and some uh, some trellising and trying to get some control of these blackberries so they grow where they're easy to harvest because right now you end up stepping on vines to try and harvest them and it's just not what I'm looking for I mean you can, over here over there in that corner is one of the blackberries that have run all the way underground and popped up back over there so like I said we don't have any control over this right now but I'm going to here's my strawberries that Beth planted all the way around these are the ones we got from my neighbor across the street I'm not figuring these are any of these are going to bloom this year because they're just put in the ground but they do have some flowers on a couple of them so who knows and then these are ones I've been producing now we've had a huge problem with slugs this year and well it's not just this year every year we have to have these things have uh, strawberries we have to race the slugs to get to them because if we leave them on the ground within just a couple of days after they turn red let me show you what happens pop this guy off of here They get in here and they start consuming with that nasty gelatin crap they got on there and start consuming our um, strawberries. So my plan is to put some diatomaceous earth out here, but we're expecting some more rain tonight. So I don't want to just put out here and let it wash away, but I'm going to put some diatomaceous earth out here and I'll let you know next week how it worked because we got a lot of green tomato or green strawberries out here. So they will be turning red and hopefully I'll have a better harvest. I did actually harvest three of them a little while ago. They're kind of kind of puny because we do not cover our tomato or our, uh, I keep saying tomatoes. I'm on a tomato kick today. We don't cover our strawberries over winter. And I was talking to one of the strawberry producers and yes, our local strawberry producers and that's what she said they do is they cover them up over the winter. And it helps them uh, stay um, from getting frozen and then they produce early in the spring. Who knew? All right, here's that flower bed I was telling you about. I still do not know what is in this thing. It's some kind of a flower, a white flower. It's supposed to grow real tall and pretty. And the only thing I know for sure that is in here is some, there's some uh, Rosa buckwheat that we planted in here. It's supposed to be like a red color. It's supposed to be a red buckwheat with white flowers in here. It was going to look real nice, but I can't tell what's buckwheat and what's grass. So this is kind of a this kind of a was not really a planned thing. It was just kind of a we had a piece of ground that I had planted watermelons and cantaloupes in last year, and I retilled it just because I wanted to get some of that black that well. I had some ground cover on here, that cheap stuff you buy at Walmart, the little paper thin stuff. Well, obviously it did not work. This, the grass grew right through it. So I I till this up to try and get as much of it out as possible. And since it was all, the ground was all broken, Beth said, well, why don't I plant some, you know, some flowers and, and some stuff for our bees here. So I said, what the hey, we'll give it a go, see what happens. All right over onto the ground garden now if you look down here you can see we have a mole problem and i've had a mole problem on my homestead for you know since i moved here since we bought this house i've had moles you know traversing underground through my through the yard and they get so bad that you know when you step on the ground yesterday we just had a huge rain we got about three inches of rain and right here where this footprint is, I stepped in here yesterday coming to look at the garden and it sunk up to my ankle. So that's just from the mold digging under the ground and making all that, that vacant space. And I have tried everything under the sun. Let me flip around here and talk to you about moles because these things have been the bane of my existence. All right, so if you have any idea that you can suggest about moles... You know, I've had guys tell me there's some kind of a pellet you can put out. But I have to be careful when I put anything out because I do have free-range ducks and I have my, my farm cats out here and I don't want to end up inadvertently poisoning them in the process. But I've tried the, uh, the traps, you know, the little trigger traps. I've killed a couple of them that way. Um, I've tried the water bottle technique that I found on YouTube where you take a 
gallon jug and you go uphill and you put it in there and you let all the water run down and have a gallon jug on to receive it and it will run up into the jug didn't work <laughs> so so i'm at wit's end right now on these doggone moles you know my cats catch a few every now and again but the cats have to be right on top of when they're starting to do it to be able to catch them then they'll dig them up but right now it's just been a hassle and i don't know why they're in this garden because when i tilled this last year i understood because last year i was digging up grub after grub after grub and this year there was no grubs there was a few earthworms in here but there was no grubs this year so and that's what moles generally eat is those those uh japanese beetle grubs so I was grateful to not see those because Japanese beetles do have a propensity to eat all my squash and any other thing that's green that they land on. But this year, no grubs, and I think we'll be out of the woods for Japanese beetles, hopefully. <laughs> but the moles have returned, and I'm not sure exactly what to do. So if you have any suggestions, please let me know. Now let me flip it back around and talk to you about this ground garden here. All right, here's my squash. All right, I got squash and zucchini. You saw me plant this, and you see I got a flower on that guy right there. They're actually starting to flower already. These things are looking awesome, especially that one right there by my catnip bucket. You know, it is really kicking butt. You know, but you can see, see the mole track? So it runs all the way down. It goes right over there to that squash right there. Now, I've, and then it keeps on going all the way around. So I got to watch out, make sure I don't step in there because it'll crush and end up breaking my ankle. And then we have one that just didn't make it. <laughs> uh, we've talked about replanting, but I told her I think we have enough. So I think we're going to have plenty of squash and zucchini. So I'm not really worried about that one not making it. This one over here. Even though it's very puny, it's actually got a flower on it before the ones that are really green and looking good. Now this back side here, this is all butternut squash. All the way down on the back side. So inside the middle is where we have our, this is our yellow squash on this end. This is our zucchini on that end over there. And then I told you about the catnip being a good thing for the squash bugs. It uh, They don't like the smell at all, so they tend to... Uh, uh, get away from that smell all right here's our blue lake bush beans you know they're coming up nice this row came up really good this guy's being slow to the party not sure what happened there and then I'm noticing that my leaves on them some of them are missing which means that my ducks have been out here munching on my leaves and I've got some bug problem already I can see a bug's been in here you know noshing on my leaves I mean, they completely destroyed that one. So, diatomaceous earth time for this guy, too. All right, we got four rows of those. So, that should give us plenty of bush beans. You know, I'm not really concerned about not having enough beans this year because, if you remember, I planted some um, ones over there that are the uh, climbing-type uh, blue lake beans. And... I'm going to do a comparison to see which one produces more. The four rows of bush beans or those that one single row of the uh, climbing beans. But my peppers are looking really good. You know, coming up nicely. We didn't lose any of them in the rain. What in the heck is that? Uh-oh. Where did that come from? Oh, we did lose one. Look, this top that I just picked up, that came off of this pepper right here. See where it snapped off right there? Snapped right off of there. So, the other wind casualty. But every other one, they're looking really good. And these are my sweet peppers. Uh, they are uh, my Marconi peppers. And I told you about them. They, they're pretty much going to substitute for our bell peppers because they they just come up really prolifically and they make a beautiful red long red pepper and you can even harvest them when they're green and they taste just like bell pepper to me so all right while I'm over here I want to show you what I've done for the bees all right I built a platform I'm actually going to be moving this Langstroth hive 
over to this. I've got another Langstroth that I just got in the mail that I'm going to put my my new colony that I've, I've got coming in June. And the, in this box here, I've got this uh, Ultra Bree B uh, pollen supplement. It's in there, and then I put a little bit on each porch so they can have it direct access to it. And then in the comb in here, that's comb that I pulled out when I took the little hive off yesterday. All the bees had had took off from there, which I was pretty much expecting to happen. And they left some honeycomb in there, so I uh, I harvested some honeycomb off of it and put it in a jar so it can and in the window so it can start leaking out. But the rest of this comb I put over here that had some nectar in it and just let these bees come do their thing. And you can see there over here, they'll, they'll come and pull all the, the good stuff out of, this, out of this comb. And then they'll start breaking this comb down and carrying it in to build a comb inside their hive. To a degree. They won't do it all, but they will do some. All right over here, this horizontal hive is kicking... I mean, I was, I'm was i so pleased with this. <clears throat> um, I don't know if you got the story about this, but what happened, um, Beth shot a video about uh, two weeks ago, I guess it was, we had a swarm. I was out here doing something else, and she said, you know, come, come get, come look, your bees are swarming. So that hive right there swarmed, and they collected up in top of that, that tree over there. She recorded it all and put it on Facebook. Well, I took all those and I put them back in this hive. I took a bucket and put them in the bucket and then went and dumped them all back in the hive and I'll climb back in the hive. The very next day, they swarmed again. Went right back to the same limb. So I said, okay, well, I'm going to try something and I tried a little bit of a trick here. I've never done it before. I've never even seen anybody do this. So I went up there with the loppers. I cut the limb off. And then I cut the limb off big enough just big enough enough to be able to fit in a gap where I left three frames out in here and I just set the limb down inside the hive closed the lid and then walked away and I came back about four days later all the bees had moved out from that limb had moved back into the hive and they actually had started building comb on that limb so I pulled the limb out and I did all this without my bee suit on and I got stung, but I put the frames back in there and sealed it up and, and started feeding them some sugar water. And ever since then, these things have been just rocking. So this colony is really growing. It's keeping, keeping up and I think I'm going to be pretty pleased with the collection here. Well, back to this hive. So after that, I thought, okay, we're out of the woods. Well, again, this hive swarmed again. And it went back to that same crepe myrtle over there, just on a different limb. So I took, I did the same thing. I took, I didn't have any more, any more boxes. So I'm like, well, what am I going to do here? Well, I did an inspection on this hive, and what I found is the box on the bottom had no brood in it at all. After it was actually just a bunch of blank comb. The middle box was full of brood and honey, and nectar and pollen. So I flipped the two boxes. And then I had that little box that was over here. It was actually on top. That was my honey super. I took it off and I put it over here because it had bees that had drawn, drawn some burr comb going across. And I put my, my deep super on top of there with my plastic frames in it. And the bees, and I did the same thing. I cut the limb off, stuck it inside the hive, and they all climbed back out in the hive and they've been happy ever since. So... Apparently that was what they were disgruntled about is the bee the queen wasn't laying any any brood down in that bottom box. So just by flipping the box over, I solved their issue. I hope. But you can see it's kind of getting a little bit tilty. It's you know, the ground starting to give way. That's why I built this stand to try and give it a little more stability over here. And I put some ground cover over there too because I, when I pulled this hive this hive apart, there was grass actually growing up through the through the screen in the bottom into the hive and you know I wouldn't want that happening in my house so I tried to get it out of theirs all right our Paris lettuce is looking really nice this is a uh, our mint all right over here Beth planted these are white early scallop 
squash and then she's got some green table squash right here and then she's got a sunflower planted back here and another I'm not sure what that is that's a volunteer so I don't know what that is that just came up like a couple of days ago so I'm not sure what that is you know when it comes up we'll know maybe she I no, you know what she may have dropped a seed because it looks like that green table squash she may have dropped a seed over here when she was doing this all right over here this is I did a t the part two potato video and these potatoes are not looking too good it's like they got beat up by the wind too so they're turning a little bit yellow I'm gonna have to do some do some work in here on these get them back rolling these tomatoes in this box this bucket those are potatoes right there too all these potatoes came out of that volunteer box when we pulled it up Beth just threw them in a bucket covered them up with dirt and want to see what happens and that's what happened but these all these tomatoes came up also these are probably all going to be cherry tomatoes because that's what we predominantly had in that box and they're looking pretty good I actually got a flower right here on this so just to let you know on on tomatoes I haven't shown you this but if I were growing this tomato out in the in the yard at this particular size I would pinch this off because I don't want it spending any energy growing flowers right now and producing fruit I need it to grow up and put some energy in getting this plant nice and tall so I just pinch that off and throw it to the side now some people scoff about that especially if you do it on paste tomatoes because they're like well those are determinate tomatoes you're wasting some of the blooms and you're only going to get X amount well I've been doing this for years and I have never had a problem with my uh, paste tomatoes losing any um, production in fact I've had very healthy tomatoes with the exception of the blight and that was a calcium issue all right my potatoes I mean just since I did that video you can see they've already grown up another six inches so I'm gonna come in here and put some more dirt in here and get these guys filled in and when I get up to the top I'll shoot the third part about what to do after after the, the potatoes get to that level all right let's head over here to the ground or to the our raised beds you see our beans are coming up nicely all that rain we got was you know pretty awesome you know it helped a lot getting the uh, getting the garden going here so beans are looking really good our watermelons I got one two three four five watermelons that have come up I planted I think 12 in here so five out of 12 that's not too bad I was really scared if all 12 came up I don't know what I'd do with 12 plants of watermelons all right on this side these are all sunflowers on this side and they all came up these are all our black beans all right black beans are looking good you can see the growth between last year and this week I mean last week and this week last year last week and this week how much they've grown up you know same thing with our Chinese noodle beans you know they're getting on up there sunflowers here my little tomato that I transplanted there it didn't make it it's going to be out of there so I'm probably going to take a tomato from another location and stick it back in that spot you know because I like it now this one over here it took up and kept on rocking so that is another San Marzano I took it over here from that box there were two of them split apart so I pulled one apart and stuck it in here it's doing really well these are also Chinese noodle beans so this whole trellis is just or arbor is just for them just for the Chinese noodle beans I'm worried that it's not wide enough to be able to do this but you know this is my first year growing them so I guess I'll learn and see what's going on here all right, my cantaloupes are looking fantastic starting to get stretched out I got to do something about these too I wanted to do some vertical gardening this year so I'm debating on just building a box a trellis around this box here to go up and just grow the watermelon or the, the cantaloupe straight up in the air and see how they do now, I know you have to support them once they get some weight to them which we have a plan for that and I'll show you when that point comes if it comes so keep up with that we're probably gonna I'm probably gonna build that in the next week the little trellis for this guy over here my loofahs are doing absolutely wonderful you know they're getting their tendrils out and starting to climb 
I put these little posts in here. I don't know if you know. I haven't shown you this since so I did this this uh, past week. So I put all these little posts in here to try and give it something to hold on to. And hopefully that will give it enough. Now, if I don't see the tendrils being able to grip onto it, what I'm going to do is get a piece of that um, fence and just tack it to here to give it something to climb up. Because I don't need it so much on this side because all I have, I have some cantaloupes over here, but they aren't looking near as good as the one over there. And I'm wondering if it's because I have tomatoes planted in here. I was doing some reading about it. They don't say that they're incompatible with each other, but I'm wondering if they might have some kind of incompatibility where they don't like tomatoes and, and cantaloupes don't like each other too much. But these are my San Marzano tomatoes, and they are looking fabulous. Growing very well. There's my, there's my, my rogue peach. So I'm going to let it, like I said, I'm going to let it get to about... About 12, 18 inches, and then I'm going to dig it up and repot it into its permanent home. Or, well, its new home until I get ready to put it in the ground. All right, here's our other tomato bed. So you can see this thing is just looking unbelievable. There's our beet. You know, we're going to probably pull, like I said, we're going to pull that up on Mother's Day, on the Friday before Mother's Day. I'm going to do the video, I'll do my garden walk, and I'm going to do the video when we pull this guy out. So continue to put comments in, in the, put comments in on how much you think it's going to, it's going to weigh, because I'm going to weigh it and see, because this looks, it looks huge. So I'm not sure how big it's going to be, but we'll see. All right, here's our rest of our tomatoes. We've got our carrots coming up nicely. You know, the, these carrots, we just planted them scattered seed along the thing here so we didn't take any place to make sure we spaced them out so they're just kind of growing all over on top of each other um, you know I don't you know I don't think it's gonna be a problem but every, all the other places so in front of these in front of those over there and over here in front of these and those I planted another row all the way down of carrots as well because tomatoes love carrots so I got, uh oh, so here, here's an example of what I was talking about. All right, so this plant is not even near where it needs to be, and it's already making flowers right here. See the flower right there? So I'm going to pull that guy off of there, and we're going to stop it from growing fruit right now until I get some growth. I'll go ahead and pop that limb off the bottom there because it's touching the ground. So... This is a, it's a good habit to get into. You're not going to hurt the tomato by doing it. You actually help the tomato because you allow it now to spend its energy trying to get some growth on it. Because the bigger it gets, the more food it's going to produce. If it starts doing fruit now at this particular age, then you're going to not get as much production. So pull those blooms off, those early blooms off. It, it won't hurt you. It's not going to, not going to be, not going to hurt the tomato. You know, you're not going to anger, anger it in any way. You know, you're just trying to help it along. Now, some people are no prune people. Some people are prune people. I, I'm a prune guy. I love pruning my tomatoes. I think they're, I think they grow so much better. Uh oh, this guy has lost its legs here. I had to pull that guy out because I don't want two of them side by side like that. Uh, my grandson. I told him to come plant the tomato somewhere, so he put it right there. <laughs> so I guess it'll be okay. I mean, it's it's going to grow up right in the middle of these, so we'll see what happens. I've got these two together also, and they're really strong plants, so I'm debating on moving it over in that plot, that spot over there where I showed you that tomato was dead, moving it over there. These are my these are my uh, purple Russian tomatoes. They're going to be a slicer type tomato. It's a new tomato we grew from Baker Creek this year. And I'm really looking forward to seeing the production on those guys. And my peppers are doing what peppers do when it gets cold and gets hot and gets cold and gets hot. They don't like it. So they're staying low to the ground. They're getting a little bit of yellow on them. Don't worry. They're, nothing's happening to them. They just, I think some of them got a little bit frost bit when we had that frost a, a couple of weeks ago. And they're still recovering. We haven't had any hot weather, really, for peppers to grow. They like hot dirt and hot weather. 
So once it starts getting heated up here, and we start having days where it stays in 80s all day long, these you'll start seeing the peppers start bounding up. Over here, though, look at this ridiculousness. All right, we figured this out. This is not a cucumber. This is probably a butternut squash because last year we had butternut squash growing in here with my cucumbers. I had to go back and look at a video I shot, and I was like, oh, yeah. So this is probably butternut squash, and look how big it's got right in this box. So apparently this is our squash box. The squash really love to grow over here, and cucumbers too. And I'm just hoping that they won't compete against each other, and these big leaves on the, the butternut squash won't choke out my, my uh, tomatoes. I mean, my, my uh, cucumbers, because these are my pickling cucumbers. All right, we've got another one over here. So that's what made these, you know, I thought maybe we had inadvertently put some, dropped some seed, but, you know, it is not what I thought it was. You can see my cucumbers are coming up nicely. I got some tomatoes up underneath them. You know, and basically I'm doing the same thing I'm doing with the potatoes. I'm letting whoever, whoever gets the tallest first wins. I did thin these out pretty, pretty good. So we'll see what happens now. I'm not sure what's in here because we had... We had some uh, cherry tomatoes in here. We've had paste tomatoes in here. So I don't know what seed may have fallen on the ground that has now repopulated itself. But we have some peppers in here too. So I have a pepper right here. I would venture to guess that that probably is an ancho because I had anchos over here last year. And in the process of harvesting them, it's a very likely that I could have dropped the seed over here. And I think this is another peach tree coming up in here. So what we took some dirt from over there and put it in here too to kind of fill this bed out. And, you know, and there's Beth. She's going to feed the goats. She's uh, trying to sneak by without me video, without me putting her on the video. All right, we got uh, more cucumbers over here. And our radishes are starting to come up. These right here are the ones that we planted. There were two of them that actually came from a trent from we... We planted them and, and tried to grow them from uh, in the little trays and then put them in the ground and only two of them survived. So I pulled the other one out the other day and this one looks like it's about ready too. So we found that radishes need to just go in the ground. You can't really grow them in the little trays. Yeah, and I bought some different squat, some different radishes, some some white ones. They're like a, they almost look like a carrot, but they're a radish. And I can't remember the name of them. We haven't planted them yet. That's something we got to do uh, as soon as we get. Probably tomorrow. Tomorrow's supposed to be really nice. All right, the back back there, this is our spinach. And then we got another lettuce back here. This is probably the butter, uh, butter lettuce. And surprisingly, it's doing really well. I guess it's somewhat shaded back in this corner with the greenhouse and the shop being here. So it's doing actually really well. I don't know if you saw that one over in the corner right there with the tomatoes. I forgot to show you that. I, I just happened to see it. This thing is looking pretty nice too. So might be not too long before we harvest that whole thing because that'll make a good salad. All right, let's rock on down this way. See our parsley is growing still. Looking nice. Probably need to come and cut some tops off of these so it can, you know, give it a haircut. It's looking a little bit, a little bit uh, crazy. Our thyme is looking really nice. It smells wonderful. All right, rocking you around this side. All right, we got our, uh, this is our mint bed, I guess. You know, it's the only thing growing in here is there's some thyme in there and some parsley, but majority of that's just mint. Over here, these guys are still coming along. Our lavender and our cilantro, our lemon balm. Our chives don't look like they're going to make it. You know, that's these guys right here. You know, I don't know what's up with chives. We can't seem to grow chives for some reason. And then back in the back there, that is dill. So, you know, the dill's coming along. In here, we've got some more thyme. This is just thyme in here. I don't know what that furry thing is right there. I have not, I, that thing just come up a couple of days ago too. I don't know what, or a couple of weeks ago and it's just been growing. I don't know what it is. It doesn't look like, it looks like a fern. Kind of looks like a celery in that. Hey, you know what? That actually might be a celery. 
I just thought about that because this is the bucket that was in our old greenhouse that we had a celery butt in and it had started growing and then when the greenhouse got destroyed this bucket got turned over on its side and it's completely possible that we may have celery seed in here as well so that might actually be a celery coming up in there too our stevia is looking nice look how pretty those flowers are got purple and white and it's the same plant so I thought that was pretty cool that it puts out two different colors of flowers. There's a more lighter lavender one here. If you can get that on, see that. You know, this is pretty nice. There's some more marigolds growing. My pawpaws are still kicking. I, I looked at the roots. I pulled it up a little bit to see what the roots are. They, they aren't root bound. They're just kind of still growing in there. So I'm going to leave them in that cup for a little bit longer. Our bee balm's just starting to come up in here. This is a bergamot bee balm. Got some more marigolds there. Some more transplanted pot tomatoes. So all these guys, all these tomatoes you see in these pots, these are all ones that were just growing rogue that Beth dug up and stuck in a pot. And we're going to have to relieve them to somewhere else because no four tomatoes won't grow in this pot. They'll be bumping into each other and it'll just be bad. The persimmons are looking really nice. You know, I want to get some more height on them. I'm going to probably repot those pretty soon just to give them a little bit more growth room and see if they'll start raising themselves up. But look what Beth and Savannah did the other day. They started painting the boards on the bottom of the greenhouse, and it looks pretty cool. That we ran out of yellow paint, so we had to, you know, had to take a, a, a stop. But this is, uh, you know, the girls' project. Letting this is Beth's greenhouse, so I'm gonna let her do what she wants to with it, and we'll see what happens. Maxi stalking something over there. You need to go catch that mole. That is my sesame street. Yeah. Looking All right. These are some more peppers in here. These are some sweet peppers, some banana peppers, I think they are. Same thing here. Hold on, you people back in the day oh. that used to watch Sesame Street, do you remember Mr. Hooper's grocery store? How it was multicolored like that? This is going to be Bethy's greenhouse, and it's going to be multicolored. <laughs> uh, she is uh, you know, really excited about this greenhouse. Our chickens are doing wonderful. Uh, show you this over here. We had to put two of them in chicken gel. Uh, this is our chicken gel over here because they just, these are the two that seem to always want to get out. They're, they always want to escape. and um, So I put them in chicken gel for a while. And let, we needed to get this grass over here mowed down a little bit because it was getting kind of tall in there. Uh, that's the Rhode Island Reds egg over there. I picked the bar rocks up this morning. Oh, starting to rain. All right, so here's our meat birds. Got through some grass in there and they have left their food bucket to go eat some grass so they're looking really good about two weeks we're going to be harvesting these guys all right let me carry you around to the front real quick before we get completely soaked actually i'm going to pause this right for right quick because it's starting to rain really well and cameras don't like rain and here's our corn all right so that's our where our internet line is so you, you know my troubles with the internet line. First I cut it over there when I was putting the electrical to my shop. And then I was broad forking in here and dug it up again. So I made this mound over the top of it and put these little, this yellow string here to mark off. Do not go any further to this side tilling or anything else like that. And a nice mound was made up. So I said, you know what? I think corn will go here. So we planted corn and you can see all the way down the, down the row. Yeah, we've got corn. The sun's come back out, popped back out here. So I want to show you that before I went to the front. All right. And the sun's bright. All right. The sun's back out. Rain for just about five seconds. And All right. So crab apple tree's looking really, really nice. Got a bazillion apples on it. 
So I'm hoping we actually get some crab apples this year. Last year it didn't rain near enough and nobody's crab apples made. So my plum tree's looking really nice. I got my, my, my Fuji apple looking great. My peach and my other plum. And my, um, well, that's Fuji. This is Granny Smith. And then I put this stick in here the other day try and give this limb some support because it was drooping way over and it's the it's one of the main limbs off of here so it's got a this thing's got a bazillion a bunch of pears on it and the limbs look like they're about to snap off and i thought sure i'm sorry i was so, so surprised that we didn't lose a limb in that heavy wind we had the other day this one too so this one's main one's staying up nice and tall it's these little guys who are you know starting to lean out so i may put some put some supports out here as well for these because these limbs are just stacked on top of each other there you go there we go so they're all just stacked on top of each other and that's not going to help a whole lot when they're having to support each other's weight with with these pairs try to get that squared away there we go all right everything else is looking really good that's my fuji apple right there and I thought, oh, geez, I don't even know. This is my yellow delicious. Gee whiz. I'm, that's, that's, why we, that's why they put tags on these things so we know what they are. But it, it survived the heavy winds too. I thought these ones were going to, I was going to lose them because of the, uh, they're just being planted. But they actually held up pretty good. All right, and I've saved this for the very last. I want to show you what I've done in the front. All right, so here I've got another purple azalea got a pink one I've got a uh, purple or a lavender rhododendron got another uh, another color of pink or uh, purple different color purple uh, azalea there another pink one there then over here I've got a, uh, a pink rhododendron in the midst of these and then yesterday I planted a pink um, hydrangea and that little stick right there sticking out of the ground that's gonna be a blue hydrangea so beautifying the front as well you know I said well I'm not gonna grow any vegetables up here so I might as well give it some beauty and try to you know give these blueberries a little bit of uh, backdrop I mean they're looking awesome too look how many berries are on these things I mean it's, it's just awesome 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 and these are already, already starting to turn a little bit of the blue color here. I don't know if you guys can pick that up. But starting to get that blue color to them. And means they're going to be uh, harvesting these before you know it. Look how many is on this one. That's ridiculous. I love blueberries. <laughs> love, love, love blueberries. All right. Get you over here where you can see me. That sun's gonna drown me out here. Yeah, that's better. Okay, now hope you enjoyed this garden walk. Um, I'm gonna be doing this every week, so I can. It's mostly for me, so I can keep up with the progression of the plants. But I hope you're enjoying it as well. And like I said, there's a couple of things I need comments on, but not just those. If you wanna, I would appreciate some comments. Let us know if you want some more content of some of, some of the things we're not doing. Um, I plan on building some stuff pretty soon, and I'm, I'll include you on that. And don't forget, I'll be uh, preaching this Sunday. So I'll be going up Sunday afternoon, so you can catch that. But until next time, remember, subscribe, give me a thumbs up, and hit the notification bell so we can so you can see when new videos come up. And also share us on your social media, whatever it may be. But until next time, remember, God is good all the time. And all the time, God is good. God bless. We love you.